jam-packed day full of ton of information to help all of you grow your Amazon business. The four P's. Or you got your picker, your packer, your purchaser, and your position leader. These are four essential only roles you'll ever need in your business, right? Some of you right now, how many are playing, and we'll go over these in detail. How many are playing all these roles right now? How many are packaging, picking, purchasing, and leading? I'm buying for myself. He's buying for himself. <laughs> We're gonna get you there. We're gonna get you there. Right, so a lot of you are doing all these roles. Sebastian, I know what it's like to do all these roles. You have to do all these have roles to. to understand them, to. to be able to grow. You have to understand these processes. It's a crucial part of any business. You gotta understand it because one of the things, and if anybody's done this in here, I'm, I apologize, but I get, I get a lot of Instagram DMs and it's like, hey Eric, I just started my business yesterday. I wanna hire five VAs. <laughs> you know? How, where can I get five VAs? Cause I don't wanna do anything. It's like, bro, lady. <laughs> You don't even know what you're doing. You started your business yesterday. Like you don't even know what to tell the VAs to do. So how are you gonna know if they're screwing it up? You don't know. You gotta understand these positions. And it's pretty straightforward here. You got your picker. What does the picker do, Sebastian? They uh, organize the products, get them ready. So you're putting in your bowls, your shipments, your through manage FDA shipment, and when you have that ready, you're providing it to the picker. They're organizing everything the way you want it to be in order to get the products to be produced. Yeah. It's that simple. It's that simple, we went over with the production line, right? Yep. Yeah, shout out to my mom too, she's watching on YouTube. Love you, Ma. Love you, Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what about, did we get any countries in there? Or this one is Romania. Romania, shout out to Romania. What else we got in there? Everywhere. 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 <laughs> awesome, we worldwide, baby. I love it. All right, so now Packer. Right, so picker is literally picking the products. So we talked about the receiving process, right? Your inventory is received, it's counted, discrepancy report, and then it's, it's staged. But how does it get staged? Let's say this is our production station. How does it get staged here? Someone needs to pick it, right? And then it's staged right here. So you got all the products right here. And then comes the packer. Someone needs to package it. What's the packer do, Sebastian? Packers, what we covered, it's the production line. They're getting the product ready to go out the way that Amazon expects it to come. Whether it needs to be bubble wrap, poly bag, FN SKU, do not separate, choke hazard, whatever Amazon's requiring of you, it needs to be prepped, prepared properly, and also making sure that they're putting the right FN SKU on the right product. And then you have your purchaser or your buyer. Right? How, many, how many of you are doing your buying for your business right now? Okay, so a lot of you are still buying your inventory, which is great. I love, this is my favorite job. Sebastian's too. We love sure. nothing more than sitting down. They're actively searching for stuff too? Yeah, they're yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they're buying, you know, connecting with suppliers and stuff. Um, you know, but, but I encourage, if you do use your buyer to reach out to suppliers, um, I've, any of the in-depth initial conversations, we encourage you to do those yourself because there's just some questions that they might not have the answers to until they're trained properly. But a buyer is the most important per person in your business. And it's because your buyer is providing inventory for your pickers and packers. So if your buyer's not buying, these two positions no longer exist and your business doesn't exist. You need to have inventory coming in. You have to. And then how do you manage all these, Sebastian? Your position leaders. You know, Eric touched on it. You wanna have somebody that's in that position that has previously done it. Mm. Toyota, huge company, everyone knows Toyota. Toyota doesn't care if you're the CEO of the company. The CEO can't go up to the guy putting the engine block in if he's never done it. Cannot go up and tell him how to do it if he's never done it. So in Toyota, when they put people into positions of management or leadership, they make sure those people have prior knowledge and experience with it. Why is that? Because they have to know when people are making mistakes, what they're doing wrong, how to increase the efficiency of that operation. If you've never done it, you don't know what to look out for. You know, like Greg, he's our warehouse manager. Greg's been with us for what, Sebastian? Six years. Six years. So of course we put him in that position. He knows the, the warehouse in and out. And we tell him all the time. He asks a question, I'll be like, Greg, do what you want to do. It's your That's warehouse. Right. You know? I just come down and tour it once in a while and make sure everything's operating. You do this. It's your warehouse. You take care of it. You know, Caddy. She's been pr producing products for us. She's our Five position years. leader. Five years now. She manages 25 women in our warehouse and men who package all of our inventory. She started 
as a packer, yeah. you know, and now she manages 25 employees every day because she knows what to do and she's good at it too, right, Sebastian? She's the best. She's the best. I'm scared she's of her. The best. <laughs> she's the best. But the reason Eric said it's your warehouse and, and Kathy's the best is if you want to have a successful business and scale, then you can't have the mentality where these people, anybody works for you. They work with you. Yeah. If you think they work for you, you're not going to have success. They're going to feel that energy, and they're not going to be motivated. Yeah. Everyone here wants a better future. You don't think your employees do? And if you can't provide that, and if you can't push them and motivate them with not only just your high energy or, or being sympathetic and understanding, but also financially, eventually, right? Greg's been with us when I could only pay him $10 an hour. Now he's doing very well for himself. But the reason is he believed in the vision, we believed in him, and we took care of him anytime we could because we understood he was working with us, not for us. Yeah, it's important to be a, a leader and not a boss. We've all had shitty bosses. Nobody likes a shitty boss. You know, but be a good leader. Lead your team. Have no problem pulling up your sleeves, getting your hands dirty, showing them what needs to be done. It's super important. And for anybody, you know, watching this right now and you're like, yeah, well, this is like, I'm so far removed from that. Like, I just have one employee. It's just me, right? But you got to change the way your mind thinks and set goals for yourself. Maybe you wanna get here in two months. Maybe you never wanna ha have a warehouse. That's okay. You still need to understand these processes because your prep center is gonna be doing the picking and the packing. And you wanna make sure you can get the lowest prep cost for your product. So you wanna communicate with them. Hey, how's my inventory being processed over there? You know, when it comes in, how's it being picked and packaged? Is there any way I can cut some time off of this? Communicate with them to save some money. And then if you have VAs doing your buy-in, you wanna set up weekly meetings with them. Make sure, review their orders. Make sure they're making you money, not leaving money on the table. You become the position leader, leading them until you can hire somebody else to lead them for you. It's good old Bezos, can we hear him? I don't know if we're gonna be able to hear no, him, right? They, they can hear him on the stream, but. Oh, you can hear him on the stream? Why don't you just reiterate? Just say what he you said? Just reiterate what he said. <laughs> hey, my name's Jeff Bezos, and I'm go. the creator of Amazon. This is in like 1996. Yeah. He's like, my name's Jeff Bezos, and I'm the owner of Amazon. And it was 1996. He's like, I sell. He's like, I sell books on Amazon. And the 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 guy filming is like, what? And he's like, yeah, books are the most purchased product in the world. You know, and the guy's like, you could hear his 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 hesitancy in the interview. You know, and Jeff's like, yeah, and I'm I'm gonna grow the largest business that the world has ever seen. And it's like, why? This guy was a nut job in 1996. He's the richest man in the world. He had a vision. A vision. How many of you have a vision here today? A lot of you, right? That's why you're here. You have a vision, I have a vision. So what else we got here? I think that might be it, the socials. How many of you follow us on all these socials right now? All right, even Clubhouse? Who's got an iPhone and doesn't have Clubhouse? Send me an Instagram DM with your, with your phone number, I'll get you a Clubhouse invite. All right, we're gonna do one more <laughs> exercise and we got a little more information to share. So everybody stand up. We're gonna do some affirmations. First of all, shake it out a little, right? Shake it out, shake it out. Get loose, get loose, get loose. All right, first affirmation, I will be better. On the count of three, say it loud. One, two, three. I will be better. Second affirmation, I can do better. I can do better. Awesome. Third affirmation, I will take action. I will take action. Last affirmation, it starts today. It starts today. One more time. One, two, three. <laughs> But something I do when I'm driving in my car, Gabe, if Gabe's back, I don't know, but he asked like, what do I do, or what does Sebastian and myself do to get motivated, right? And I'm a firm believer that in order to stay motivated sometimes, sometimes I'm not just feeling it. Who wakes up in the morning sometimes and you're not just feeling it, right? It's like, oh man, another day? It's like, oh my God, I just had 14 of these in a row. Another one? I gotta do another one of these? It's 5.45 in the morning. You know, we all have those days. Some days I just can't break it. So what I do, first thing I get in my car, I scream as loud as I can. We're gonna do that together. <laughs> All right, who's ready to do that? Who's ready to scream as loud as they can? All right? So I'll do it first, to let you know that I'm cool, getting uncomfortable with everybody. I'll let you into my car ritual. And then I want everybody else to do it. All right, so I just get in my car. Usually the podcast is on from the night before. I turn everything off and I just go, ah! Right? And then sometimes I'll do it again. Ah! 
I'm trying to change just my mental state, my physical state. So on the count of three, I want everybody to scream. One, two, three. Ah! Louder. One, two, three. Ah! Awesome. Fantastic. Thank you. Everybody can take a seat. <laughs> We've known each other for what, 20 something years now? Yeah. So we, we've, we've experienced a lot of quitting between me and him, especially early on. You know, me and him have complete, become completely different people than we were when we first met 20 years ago. Before transformations, right? And that goes back to the beginning, full circle, where everything that we provide today will not benefit your business if you're not changing. Yeah. Full transformation. How many people want to experience a transformation? Say aye. Aye. Awesome. Louder. How many people want to experience a transformation? Say aye. Aye. Awesome. Fantastic. And that wraps it up, everybody. For now. We got we got a couple more things going on. Here.